talk I will be with uh, David Henry Bismuth, who is a strategy consultant at Niji, and uh, Debbie, freelance designer and developer. And so we are very fortunate to have a few of the French Glass Explorers, because as you know, or maybe uh, the Google Glass for the moment, it's very reserved to the US market. And so very, I think in France, we have maybe around 10 glass on the French market. And I see that somebody else is wearing Google Glass in the, uh, is there any other Google Glass uh, Explorer in the public? No, so we are only four in the room. So during this talk, we will cover um, Google Glass, the basic usage of Google Glass and the, some use case. And then we will discuss very briefly uh, how to develop an app on Google Glass. And so if you have any questions, if you want to know something, don't hesitate to raise your hand and we, we will be very happy to answer your question. So, is, is your... OK, perfect. So, um, and uh, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Adrian, so I work at faber Novel, and we are a co-organizer with WebShell of uh, API Days, and I hope you're all having a great day. Hey. So, uh, without further ado, maybe we can start by uh, presenting the very basic functioning of Glass, hey. and I maybe just want to, OK, Glass. Take a picture. So I got your names. I know who was there. So okay. it's up to you. Yeah. So may maybe you can start by uh, introducing the basic functionality of Google Glass, how it's working. And I know you, you can do some screencasts. So I'm sure everybody would be very happy to see how it's working. And maybe you can sit down. Yes, good, good afternoon, everyone. So first of all, pardon my uh, bad English accent. <laughs> I'm French. Even my Google Glass uh, have difficulties to understand me, so please excuse me by advance. So just a little point. Here you will see what I'm actually seeing on my glass. So when I'm activating them, you will see with some delay what I'm seeing. So effectively when I say, OK, glass, take a picture. So it's taking a, it's taking a picture of you. So you see it normally, but like two or three seconds after it. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, it works. <laughs> okay, perfect. So for the moment, Google Glass, they speak, uh, as David say, only English, and they understand only uh, American English. And so maybe you, you can present us uh, uh, briefly the different comments. So can you say anything uh, to, to Glass, or do you have to, to use specific words? Uh, so there is a list of things that you can do. Uh, basically, you can uh, take a picture, record a video, uh, send a message, and with the new GDK, you can also develop apps uh, where you can uh, add a new message. So you can search a recipe, or uh, you can basically do anything you want. You, you can, can even play golf if you want to. <laughs> yeah. I haven't tried this one, but you can play game and listen to music, and it's the last functionality of it. Yeah. So yeah, there is a list of things, but you can also install apps, so you have other things that you can add in the list which yeah. is pretty new. It, w it was not here a few months ago. Yeah. Maybe a question. Who is familiar with Google Glass already? OK, not so maybe just the, the, the concept is that there are smart glasses connected to a smartphone. Yeah, OK, it's my computer. Uh, so you just have to, you need a, a smartphone to push data to your glass. And so you are just uh, exchanging information with your voice or with your touchpad. And, and that's it, basically. But you need a smartphone. That's yeah. Just, just a so in, if you look at what's inside Google Glass, it's very, very similar to what's inside a smartphone. You have a GPS chip, Wi-Fi chip, Bluetooth chip. There is no 3G chip. So when you are uh, away and you don't have Wi-Fi, you have to be tethered with Bluetooth to your smartphone to get uh, connectivity. You have a screen, battery. Also, the battery is really... Uh, it's working, uh, I think if you use it, it's working for two, three hours. And um, so I, I like to say that it's, um, 
is the equivalent to what early Nokia phones were to smartphones. So it's a very, uh, although it's very impressive in terms of miniaturization, what Google has done, it's still a very early prototype, and you just get a glimpse of, of the of the future. Um, so maybe I think you you had some very interesting example of uh, Google Glass apps to show us about uh, translation. Ah yeah, yeah, I can make a demo. It's the killer app because. Uh, usually people are asking what is the big difference between Google Glass and smartphone. And so indeed this is one, one of the functionality. So what you need is something to translate. Okay. Okay. So we just say, okay Glass, uh, translate this. Okay, there is some delay. Okay. One thing. I just need to look indeed at the text I want to translate and automatically okay it's horrible but auto automatically okay just <laughs> okay so I'm looking at the text Working. and it's translating in uh, in live everybody is holding his breath <laughs> <laughs> okay some of it is translated so, and, uh, but it's working. <laughs> it works really cl quickly on his head. It's just that the system we use to share the screen is uh, pretty slow. But it's 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 really it's really yeah. quick directly on the fo on, on the Google Glass. Sorry about that. Yeah. In fact, you, you have a lots of application uh, taking pictures, video, making Hangout. Maybe we can we can show Hangout. And the the big difference between smartphone and uh, and and Google Glass is that you you have uh, you are you are still uh, the con there is like a convergence digital, digital convergence, saying that uh, normally when you're using a smartphone, it's like uh, a screen. In France, we, we call it uh, an écran. And so you can't see through your screen. And with Google Glass, you have transparency in the, the little screen you see here. So I can see my hand. And that's that's the big difference. And all the applications developed on Glass as based are based on this. That is to say that you are not excluding yourself from the, the real world. Yeah. So you are interacting with others and with the digital, and indeed okay. with Google, I mean Google. Yeah. Exactly, when, when you have your smartphone and you get notifications about things that happen to you on Facebook or things like that, you kind of get out of the moment. You're with your friends, but you're on your smartphone and that's all, and you're not interacting with your friends anymore. You're just with your smartphone, and you start playing games and things like that, because you have so many things on your smartphone. And Google Glass is trying to solve this problem by showing you, by giving you the option to do the things you do on your smartphone, but re really, really quick, and also not giving you the things that you don't need. It gives you just the notifications that you need in the moment. Moment. It gives you the option to um, do what you need to do with it really quick, really fast, and then you go back in the moment. So you still interact with your like friends, and you, you don't start playing games or start looking at your Facebook. You just get what you need and go back in the moment. Yeah, let's say I'm hungry and I want to go to a restaurant. I just say, okay, Glass. Google, Google, came okay, hard with this one. Google, okay. the Google is quite hard. But you need to, 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 to say it. So, okay. restaurant. Yeah, the screen so, is I'm, just, I'm just saying it. The screen is, the screen is, is down. Yeah, okay. that's, a, that's a big problem with Google Glass, is that you really need to speak in English with a good accent. And yeah, so that, it's that, not that's very a problem. French friendly. Yeah, uh -huh. but they're they're probably gonna release it in France in French, so mm -hmm. we might be able to use it in French as well. Okay, just like this with restaurants, I'm just looking at all the results results near where we are. That is to say, Elizabeth And after, I'm just talking with my friend and say, okay, uh, maybe we can go to Thai event. Seems good, good, good rating from Google. Okay. Once again. Atelier Robuchon, okay, we are very rich, let's go there. Uh, <laughs> and we, if you want to go there, it's quite, quite simple. You can, you can call to book the table and say, okay, let's call it, say, let's go, let's go there. And that's it. And so as you can see, to, just to bounce back on what you were saying earlier, the very, it's not, people often think that it's augmented reality. It's not exactly augmented reality because uh, as you can see the screen, it's not directly in front of your eyes. It's at the top right corner of your eyes. So you have just to look, and it's 
basically a notification device. It's very, very precise. It's uh, contextualized. It depends on the place you are, the time, the weather, and whatever. But it's not technically augmented reality. It's not as you, if I'm looking through the glass, I will be looking up and not directly at you. Mm. So I won't it's have It's not in the middle of your vision. Yeah. You really have to look up to see it. You don't see it normally. So it's a choice they made, and you have other glass in the market, and they, uh, you can have uh, augmented reality. So uh, I think you, both of you have developed uh, apps for Google Glass. Maybe you, you can uh, explain us a bit the, the concept of the app you developed and uh, how it's like and how it's different from de developing an app uh, for a smartphone on Google Glass. What are the different uh, technical issues, UI, UX and UI issues? Okay. So my app is called Life.tl. And it's the only video game where you are the hero in your real life. So it pushes you to uh, enjoy your life, make your life more exciting by uh, doing challenges and, give, um, and getting rewards from your challenges called achievements, like in video games. So once you do something uh, with Google Glass, you can take a picture of what you're doing, and then you say achievement unlocked. And uh, you basically you achieve that, and it shares it with your friends. Uh, your friends can see it on their phones, can see it at, on a website, and also it's also linked to Facebook and Twitter. So it's called Life.tl. It's not released yet. Uh, we're gonna open it in December. So if you're interested, go to Life.tl. Give us your email. We're not gonna spam you. Don't worry, and you will be able to uh, access the first beta and also try it on Google Glass if you have one or on your phone. And so when you develop the, the app, uh, so when, what kind of uh, programming language do you use and in what is it different from a smartphone? So there are, I, I only use the Mirror API, so there are two ways of developing apps on Google Glass. The first one is a Mirror API, which is basically a, an API, uh, a REST API where you can push information or get information. And there is also the GDK, which uh, allows you to create native apps where you can access the hardware, like the taking pictures and really uh, accessing everything you want. But the one I used to make my app was the Mirror API because the GDK is uh, it's something really new and I never used it. But he's going to talk about it, I guess. Mm. Um, so uh, I personally, there, there are some uh, SDKs that you can use to use the Mirror API easily so you don't have to... Um, write down the code and the HTTP request by yourself. You use an SDK. So there are several SDKs for this. Uh, in Python, PHP, Go, Java, and I think that's all. Uh, but I haven't used any of those. I, I did it by myself uh, for this app. Um, so yeah, the on, the, on the developing part, uh, I mean, this is uh, free of access, so you can go there. Just yeah. type developers Google Glass, and you have all, all the, the information. Uh, and typically, on developer Git, voilà, on develop. And yeah. so you can, you can voilà, they, they're explaining why, why you're using the GDK, why you are using the Mirror API, and you can find all the code and all the guidelines you need to develop on Glass. Uh, one important point is that you need Glass to develop on Glass. That's, that's, that's an important point. For instance, the, the Mirror API, the one you used and uh, we used in developing our application, you, you need a special access from Google. And, you need, and to, to get this access, Mirror API, uh, you need to have glass, so that's, so that's you need to pay a thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the point. Maybe we to, to 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 get glass is quite difficult today. Okay, so <laughs> it's quite difficult because you need to be part of the explorer program. Uh, the the explorer program is this program, in fact. And so maybe just to, to come back on what you were saying about developing an app, yeah. uh, in terms of uh, user interface, yeah. um, are you completely free to do whatever you want to do? Do you have like some very strict gui guidelines? So uh, and how is it different from a smartphone? So when, when you develop an app for Google Glass, you really develop it for Google Glass. You cannot say, I have an app on my Android or I have an app on my iPhone, and I want to make it um, for Google Glass and make the, the same exact thing. You really have to think about your app, the way users will use it with Google Glass, which is a really different experience. You cannot just say, I'm going to do the same thing. You really have to design it for Google Glass, uh, which is pretty different. If you use the GDK, uh, which I say is pretty is something pretty new, you can do pretty much everything you want. 
you can use the hardware, you can you can really make uh, an app for Google Glass using um, all the hardware. But if you use the Mirror API, um, it's pretty strict. You cannot you you cannot add um, um, a sentence, as I said, like OK Glass, do something. You cannot add a sentence. You can only push notifications on the timeline. And you can also add a context when you take a picture or, sh or a video and you want to share it. You can add your app on the list of things you can share too. So let's say I'm the Facebook app, then I'm going to add a contact called Facebook. And if I take a picture, I'm going to share it with the contact Facebook. And Facebook is going to get it and then share it on its own website. So this is what you can do with the Mirror API. Mm. It also has a lot of restrictions too, because Google really wants you to give the user the best experience. So they want you to be very consistent with, with what you're giving the user. Uh, so there are very strict guidelines on the colors, on the way you present information, because they don't want you to push uh, a card on the timeline with something at a certain place, and the second one uh, at a to totally different place because it's not a good user experience. So that's why we're, there are really strict on what you can do and cannot do with the Mirror API. But it's, mm. it's a good thing. So would you say it's easier or harder to develop uh, an app for Google Glass or smartphone? It's, it's different, because uh, for Mirror API, it's like you're developing a RSS feed, something like that. Yeah, basically. And uh, with the GDK, it's like developing an Android application, which you can launch directly from your Glass. So, and the, the way you, you are, when you say, putting the parameters of uh, your application with the Mirror API, API is generally web-based. So you're going on the website, you're saying what you want to receive, and after you receive it. Because for, for instance, uh, may, maybe I can show the application uh, we yeah, developed. Sure. When you make it. Uh, yeah. Uh, if it's working, okay. Um, okay, so maybe some of, you know this uh, magazine, it's called L'Equipe, uh, L'Equipe.fr. Uh, so it's to, to receive all the uh, news of L'Equipe. So it's still uh, on development. It will be live on L'Equipe.fr soon. And basically, uh, you just need to explain the application first, how it works and everything. And after that, you just need to connect with one of your Google Plus accounts. One of the facts which is important is that to receive something on Glass, you need to connect with a Google Plus account. So I'm going to choose one of my accounts. But it's the Google Plus account that has to be tied to your uh, exactly. specifically paired. Okay. It has to be paired. And after you just this is the Mirror API authorization. So it's the OOS OOS2 uh, application. So just accepting. And after that, you just redirect it to something, <laughs> to when it will want. Okay, and it will be redirected to a page when you will uh, put parameters of uh, of your application, like uh, the type of news you want to receive, uh, all all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. that's great. And so, n according to you, what would be the the best use case for Google Glass, like the in terms of, because uh, the critique that is often made to today, it's, it's not very often different from a smartphone or it doesn't offer as much functionality. So for you, what would be the, like the, the killer application, killer use cases uh, where Glass would really make sense? Um, in my opinion, Glass is uh, made for a specific exper experience and for a specific time in your life. Uh, when you're on your laptop, you would probably not use Google Glass because you have everything on your laptop. Or oh, some people think Google Glass it go is good when you're waiting on the subway. I don't think that's a good use case because you need, I don't know, if, if you want to um, watch a movie or something like that, you're not going to use Google Glass. It's really made for uh, when you are living real life things. Like when you're with your friends, when you're hanging out, when you're uh, cooking, when you're walking on the street. It's really for this kind of usage, where you don't need technology, and you're not using technology, but you still want to get your notification, and you still want to be able to do uh, things related to technology, but that's not your main activity at, 
uh, at this, that moment, that precise moment. And uh, I will just add that uh, also the situations when you need your hands. I mean, if you're cooking, yeah. if yeah. you're doing use, bicycles, yes. if you're running, all that kind of uh, use of the, the Google Glass is really good because you, you can you can do plenty of stuff. You have yeah. you can take pictures, record video, make a hangout with someone while you buy doing bicycles in in Paris, for instance. So mm. that's mm. very useful, and you can share instantly, like with your friend, and you're not like cutting you from the other. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean and so now how would you say it fits in your uh, daily life? Do, do, well, first question: Do you wear it every day, or do you wear it only at a very specific time? And uh, would you say people look at you uh, like you are a complete stranger in if you wear it on the street? So I use it every day, and I wear it every day. And I was very surprised that people don't look at me as I. They, they don't say, "Oh, that's weird. What are you doing?" There, I have pretty positive feedback. Like people are okay with that. And well, well, yeah, I wear it every day. And to answer your uh, previous question, the for me the, the best feature is the GPS. Uh, because when you're walking, I don't know if you did this before, and you take your phone in your hand and you're trying to see where you have to go while walking, it's it's really a pain. While with Google Glass, you have it on your head and you just move and you just walk. And if you need to know where you have to go next, you just look up and it's also telling you in your ear that where you have to go. So go turn right, turn left. It's exactly like a GPS on your car, but it's wh while you're walking. And for me, that's the best feature. And also, I really like taking pictures and videos mm. because when there is something that is happening, and, and I'm like, oh, quick, quick, I have to take a picture, and I go turn on my phone, and then I have to find the the picture app. While well, with Google Glass, I just have to, have to press a button or to talk, and it's going to take the picture, which is really awesome, and it's it really shows how Google Glass uh, allows you to make very quick actions uh, mm. in the moment. And so, and in terms of. Uh uh, how to say autonomy? Because uh, I've heard that it's very, very short. It's so not good. It's not that good. Like, how long would it uh, last if the, you well, use it? I don't know on a regular basis. I mean, for for the first, there, there were two models of uh, two models of Google Glass. There was there were the first model called the V1 and the V2, which you have one and I think uh, I have one. And uh, the battery is better, but uh, they they said when at the first time when they 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 sent the first glass that it was one day of autonomy, and the uh, and the truth is that it's like more like two or three hours by well, full usage. I it, mean, it depends on what you use. If you're yeah. if you're hanging out with your friends or if you're using the GPS, yeah, it's not gonna last for a long time. But uh, um, I wear it every day and I charge it every day like my smartphone. But mm. yeah, like if I if I have a, an entire day of work and then I want to go to a party uh, at night, then I can't. I, it's it's really for one day, and then when you go back home, you charge it, which is a problem. But I guess I'm gonna solve it with the second version because I have the first one. The mm -hmm. second one is a bit, a bit better, but not not still not uh, good. I mean, it's like one day, it's a bit better. Man. I mean, I'm making a lots of hangouts, taking videos, taking pictures doing research on the internet, so I mean the, the battery lasts okay one day this time, but uh, I mean if you are doing really hard stuff with it, like playing a game, uh, playing I mean programming and doing some stuff, it's it's not enough. So yeah. they, they still have progress to to make on it, but it's still a prototype. So yeah. maybe when in the commercial version it will be great. And so I have a question: Are you worried about your health when you wear Google Glass on your head? Or is it um, I, I read something on the internet about the research they made uh, on the screen, and I read that it was the safest screen they they have ever seen. Like for your eyes, uh, it's it's better to look at this screen than to look at a uh, regular TV or video projector. That's what I read on the internet, which is okay. pretty cool. Uh, about it's all it's about the vision. For the rest, I. I I don't know, but I'm not. I'm not worried about anything. But me, the, it's not really the vision. It's like m more like the the heat, the heat coming from here, from the CPU. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite disturbing. In fact, it's quite hot, and uh, I don't think it's bad or good for the health. But it's just like maybe it's frying my my brain. I don't know. Sure. <laughs>
<laughs> you, you never know. <laughs> and so, and in terms of uh, use cases, Google is very focused on the B two C, but and they are the the one who makes the, the most uh, noise on the smart glass market. But uh, I think there are many other players. And uh, what do you think about B two B applications, like very professional applications for uh, workers, people working in logistics or any kinds of uh, very very professional applications? Uh, there, there are, uh, I mean, with uh, with with my company, so Niji, we we are seeing lots of uh, industries, and uh, I think that uh, Faber Novel also. But they are really interested in the usage in the professional usage, like information, for instance, when uh, you have some new stuff doing some uh, work. Uh, I don't know in the factory. I don't know where. In fact, yeah, uh, yeah, some, some places, and they don't know how to do something, so they just calling their supervisor. And with the basic functionality of Hangout, the supervisor will see what the, the worker will see. So we'll be able to talk with him and to help him to do something. So, so uh, what's great what you're saying is that maybe there will, there will be in the future new forms of e-learning. And so yeah, rather than you will be sitting in front of your computer, you will be, I don't know, out in the field mm. or uh, and someone will be right in in, full yeah. in your ears to, to see to what you are you doing. It will be, they will be able to push you some cards. You know the, the cards we, we show you, uh, we showed show you, uh, we showed you, and uh, like the the way the, like a manual. You know, like when when no you, you you don't know how to do something, you need to to search or to open your book, and with the Google Glass you can you can just receive mm. the way to do it step by step, and you say okay I do that okay I did do that I did that so that's. And Actually, well, one of the it makes me think one of the very first uh, people who were interested in Google Glass were uh, surgeons and uh, people working in uh, hospitals, and they uh, there there are many experimentations going on. Uh, some doctors who are wearing Google Glass during uh, surgery so they can uh, live uh, transmit to their colleagues and check uh, the patient files, patient status right in front of their eyes. Uh, and I've heard that uh, well, the, the problem is that. Obviously, when you're doing surgery on someone, you have blood on your hands. And so to work on the touchpad, it's not so great <laughs> for the moment. Uh, uh, yeah, about live surgery. I mean, we, we tried Hangout. Maybe we can show, show yeah, you how it was. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, Maybe sure. Why we're speaking, just that uh, a lot of stuff is just circulating about the, the Hangout functionality. I mean, to right now, the, the quality is not, I mean, it's not, maybe you can call me. Or I call you. Yeah, you call me. Just call me. And but the quality is not is not so good. I mean, but that because of the network, I, I yeah. assume. But uh, it's so, are you calling network. me? Oh no, I'm calling you. Wait, I'm calling you. Okay, so I'm just calling Barbara. So okay, you see, you see me. That's screen. that's great. Is it <laughs> good? Good for you. I'm yeah. I'm calling you. Ah, you calling me? It's ringing. Ah, wait. Okay, great. <laughs> I lost you. <laughs> Where are you calling me? Okay, I'm doing. And so, and as you can hear, uh, there is no um, the the sound is not coming from an earplug. Yeah, well, call me again. It's a bone conduction, so yeah. it's it uses your head as a. Um, oh, I don't know the English word. Caisse de résonance. It's just like a. It uses your head as a speaker, and so it makes your. Uh -huh. uh, your skull uh, vibrates, and so you, you can hear, and so um, which makes it that it's not very uh, private when someone is having a conversation, and if it's if it's quiet in the room, I can hear what the other person is saying, and but they have a new version with a small earplug that you can put in your uh, uh, right uh, right ear. Okay, and about your question, uh, you said earlier because we're waiting for this to work. Uh, I see a lot of things that we can do with uh, Google Glass, and for business as well. Like, for um, can you can you see what I can see? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so for instance, for a delivery system, you could be on your bike delivering some uh, package, and you you can see where you have to go next and. Yeah, there are a lot of usage that we can um, do. There are a lot of possibilities that are opening with the fact that we have technologies on our head, which is pretty awesome. Can you see yourself? I think, yeah, it's quite so you see the, 
the quality is not that great, but yes. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. it's good. It's good to exchange something or to show show yeah. hands or and I, I doing can see like him. gross gross stuff. But I, I am doubting about the surgery and the, the precision of it, unless you're 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 operating on the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> And so that to, to continue what you're saying on business, so that for business uses, it's, uh, there are many opportunities. You can take notes, and it will uh, translate instantly into text what you're saying. It, Evernote already has an app, and so rather than typing, you can just dictate yeah. something, and it will translate into text. You can maybe the next LinkedIn, when you, instead of receiving a, a card, you will just take the picture of the people of the person who is uh, facing you, and we just recognize or just uh, put the name, and you will have all your uh, list of contacts. So yes, for for sure, for business aspects, there are many many use cases. Oh, the conversation yeah. uh, is down. Um, maybe some of you have questions because I don't know how many time left we have. I think we had only uh, 20 minutes, and we are way over uh, the 20 minutes. So, is our person? Yeah. Is um, Google know what the date of uh, the launch in uh, in Europe or in France of uh, the Google Glass? Is it in 2014 or um, later? We we don't we don't even know for the US. Yeah. But it's supposed to be launched uh, next year. Yeah, next year. Next year in the US. In the That's U what the rumors say. Uh, but we we don't even know for the US, so we don't know for Europe. But I hope it's gonna be. Uh, next year as well. I mean, end, end of next year. There, there is a big, big, uh, not a problem, but a, uh, <laughs> a detail. I mean, Europe is not the same legislation than the US, so they need to get, how do you say, CEE uh, validation. Uh, agreements, yeah. Agreements, and uh, right now they don't have it. So yeah. that's why uh, Google is not Google France is not communicating on it, because... Uh, I mean, we're working on Google Glass. You're, you're working. I mean, Faber, mm. Niji, Barbara, all working mm. on Google Glass. But they, we can't communicate with them because if they have a problem uh, with Google Glass and yeah, the I law shows that it. they knew that there were Google Glass in France and that the CE hasn't validated it, they can get blocked to the commercialization. So it's huge, uh, huge risk for them to uh, to do mm. stuff on Google Glass. So they just need the validation, I think, the legal validation of, uh, of the Glass. But they they have announced that there will be a Glass App Store in 2014. When it's still, uh, I don't have a crystal ball to, to guess when it will be out. Mm. But they they announced it. So, but they are keeping the communication down, and it's are very uh, mysterious about the subject. Uh, about the, the, the glass uh, glass store, right now when we, we need to add an application on our Google Glass, we just go in My Glass, so on the web or on the, the smartphone, and so right now you, you have the application here. So there is like 20, not, not more, not a lot, and you have all the glass and you can add it, and that's the, I mean, the pseudo... Uh, the, the, yes, it's uh, an embryo. Store, but you, you don't have a lot. I mean, like, okay, write this. If I go down, you have all of them. So it's like one page. So it's not so thousands. As you can see, there are already se several uh, applications on, uh, on Google Glass be being developed. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the next version of Glass, actually, Glass uh, Google they announced recently for the people who purchased the first version of Glass, they will be able to, to swap it for the I think the second or third generation, and that can support uh, prescription lenses. So it's true that you you see I have a big uh, prescription glasses and Google Glass. It's not very very comfortable, uh, but they are working on integrating uh, everything with uh, prescription glasses. But it's uh, not completely ready yet. Yeah, but you, uh, it should be pretty easy to add this kind of glasses mm. since you can already add um, glasses right here. Like I, I have uh, some. Uh, it's called shades, and it it allows me to have uh, sunglasses uh, with my Google Glass. So you can already add something. They just have to make it for your eyes, and that's the biggest problem. But you can already have real glasses. On your Google Glass. So there still seems to be an issue with the lack of speech. Like you say that people haven't 
So just to repeat the, the question, so what about uh, the issue of uh, privacy? And so uh, it's true that, uh, no, uh, or may <laughs> maybe I, I misunderstood uh, your, your question. My question is that there still seems to be an issue about how discreet Google Glass really is, and that it's still, it's still very present, that you can, very, very clear that you're looking at me through, you know, through a camera. And you know, you say that people haven't really said many, you know, said much to you about it. But is there still? It's it's a, it, it's part of the discourse, right? How do you think it does need to be more discreet? And is this something that you would wear, for instance, as a contact lens or some other way that could then connect more uh, directly without you know having this um, glass sticking yeah. out? So you're, you're talking about the future and what it could uh, be. Yeah. So what it's it's what it's going to be later because this one is pretty visible and you, well, it's not very discreet. yeah, and you're asking if uh, in the future it would be better to have it on your lenses or yeah, like on your eyes. So my opinion would be yes, I think it's it's it would be better and I would be okay to wear this, but I can totally understand people who would not want to uh, have this kind of things in the market because. Yeah, when I take a picture of you, you can really see it. You can really see what I'm doing. And if it's really hidden in your head, then it's... Yeah, of yeah, course. It's, it's, still, it's already existing. I mean, micro cameras, and you can put here, and you can take like 10 pictures, or one picture each 10 seconds. So it's already existing, it's already in yeah. the market. And just to, 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 to answer about the future, uh, the first, the Google Glass is just like the first version. I mean, you, you, you have to look for backward uh, at the launch of the first smartphone, I mean, in 2004, something like that. It was quite ugly. I mean, the user experience was not good, and it was not practical. I mean, the, it was not very precise, and that's, that's Google Glass. I mean, the same. It's the first version. So you have to, to look forward and say, it will be more practical to use it. Right now you have a touchpad, but you will have integrated the mm -hmm. end recognition, so you won't have to touch your touchpad. You will just manipulate in the air. And indeed, of course, it is projected in your, in your eyes. But uh, there is some experiment on lenses, on connected lenses, when you can, right now, you can show some pixels on your eyes, like two or three. Yeah, I think like two or three, three pixels. Yeah, it's, like it's the yeah. beginning. <laughs> but I mean, we will have the disparition, the progressive disparition of the wearable uh, technologies to integrated technologies uh, with the human bodies. I mean, will be like uh, augmented uh, man, and like some mm. something like yeah. connected, totally connected. I mean, maybe we will not connect it to the eye, but directly to the brain. I mean, that's, that's possible. I think we're working on it. Right now, we, s we can manipulate objects with, uh, or, or you say, with uh, an electroencephalogram, egg. In ECG. ECG, uh, yeah. In so you can, with the impulsion, you can go, say, left or right, and manipulate, for instance, uh, our, our drone from Parrot, for instance. You can oh, yeah, uh, flying objects. Flying yeah, flying objects, objects. So in the, in the future, we'll be able to text-to-speech with just neural impulsion. But that will be in like 10 or 20 mm. years. Yeah, but it, it's getting better every, every year. So we will probably have that. And I, I'm, I think it's that's a good thing. Like we're changing the way we use technology and we're integrating technology uh, every day on our daily lives. And I think that's a good thing. But there are a lot of issues with privacy and a lot of people that complain about privacy. And that's totally understandable. And in my opinion, that's the biggest problem that makes uh, connected objects uh, not going as fast as it could possibly go. Um, but yeah, it, it's getting better every year, and, that, and, I, and I guess that in a few years, we will all have uh, Google Glass or similar connected products. It's just a matter of time and a matter of, uh, of how we can solve those privacy problems. Yeah, and, and to continue what you were saying about uh, connected objects, you see uh, appearing connected watches, little connected device to measure your heart rate, the uh, number of steps you've done in the, during the day. So probably the future will not be just 
only the Google Glass as a standalone, de standalone device, but maybe you will have uh, one device for connectivity with 3G in, in your pocket, one connected wristwatch for specific information, a connected uh, glass for other type of use case. So it's, and Google says it, that it's not made to be, to, to work just on its own, it's a um, companion device. And so probably the, the future will be made of uh, several companion devices working all together to give you several informations, uh, very specific and for very specific usage. And uh, yeah, right now you're wondering if you you have a company working for a big company on which interface you have to uh, bet. But uh, I think we, we can say right now that uh, you have to to wonder what is what will your service be more than what on which mm. interface it will be because uh, like you see with Google Glass and all the services you have account connection. So when you subscribe to one servi service, mm, I don't know how to say it. When um, you will receive all the service on all the device you, you need, like Google is just that. I mean, if I subscribe in on some some site, I will receive it on my on my phone, on my Google Glass, on on my computer, on my homework computer, on my tablet, so ev everywhere. So the big question is, what will your service be? It's not English, but it's <laughs> okay. Any other question? It will. Um, ah. No. Um, Upstairs? I, no, no questions? I don't know if we have some time left. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. What time is it? I, I, I think we are way, way past our time. Uh, I don't <laughs> know. Well, uh, in that case, if you, if it's okay. Oh, one more question. You already said that there's 10 glasses in France right now. Mm -hmm. How many developers uh, are working on, on development uh, on glass in France? That's a hard question to answer. Um, I don't know, I would say um, I around know, I know, I know. 10, 20. I yeah, know. like maybe like a little bit more. But there it's, are, there it's are a lot Android. Of people so who, there are a lot of people who are interested in working mm. on Glass. The problem is they don't have Glass, so they can't develop apps on Google Glass. But there are a big, big interest on Google Glass. They opened a meetup group uh, about developing on Google Glass and not just using Google Glass, it's really about. Google Glass development, and I think there are 200 people on this. So Three, there is a, a lot 345. of 300. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So because there's I, I'm big interest on g developing on Google Glass, but we cannot really know how many are developing on Google Glass because they need need the prototype. So yeah, the, the, about developing. I mean, you have like uh, 10 pairs, maybe 20. I don't mm, know more, yeah, more than more, than yeah. 10. I mean, we we have five. You have one. You have three. So that's. Mm, yeah. There is Alain Regnier, there is one more, you, you one there, and... and Google, uh, the financial partnership, <laughs> I would say, they, for uh, $1,500, you, you can get the, the pair, but they, it's very competitive, you, you, you have to get lucky enough to, to get selected, and if you get selected, you, 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 you pay. To, to, the, to the partnership, I mean, you know, as I said, it's, they, they can't declare themselves that they are uh, obviously hosting Google Glass in France or in Europe in general because they will have big problems later, maybe. So they won't, don't want to take the risk. But uh, unofficially, yeah, they're making some partnership with some companies who are developing on Glass. Mm. And, uh, maybe I can, I can say one, one partnership with a gaming company in France. So doing that, does send some glasses, but otherwise they, they don't have partnership. And uh, much, yeah. usually it's that because, because of us, we have networks in mm. the US so that we can retrieve some Google Glass in France. Yeah. And in case but of Barbara, she was living in the US. Yeah. So I was she, lucky. she <laughs> came back uh, f to France with, uh, with her glass. But some big companies, I mean, I, I won't say the name because it's confidential, but they have glass like the, the IT service. But the question is that what are they doing with it? Are they developing some stuff on it? And big questions are they, they, they see the technology, they see all the potential, but they have quite difficult, lots of difficulties to find the right usage. I mean, what kind of application do I need to develop on Glass? Because uh, first, it's, it's hard to project yourself in the future, and, uh, and second, you don't know the usage because it's a prototype. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, as we said, Google is changing the, uh, the operating software each month. We are right now in X11, uh, and uh, they are changing it. So the touchpad it will not respond the same in two months. And we may have some air, uh, end recognition in three months, so it's not quite mm. not sure. But like a developer, that, that would be 10. I mean, mm. you know, yeah. I don't know how many you have in, uh, in Faber Novel, but... Uh, we have one person very specialized in Okay, it, you have a but it, okay. but it's uh, <laughs> mostly Android, so finding people who can develop on Glass, it's looking for people who can develop on Android. Yeah. It's not a competency that it's not so hard to find on the market. Yeah. Uh, I think our time is up. I, some, um, and so it's for the next one. So thank you very much. Thank you, yeah, thank you. David. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie, for uh, answering and uh, having this discussion on Google Glass. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah. uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And if you are interested in uh, talking with us or um, asking more questions, or if you're interested in uh, having um, contacts with developers on Google Glass or just people who can mm. make you try Google Glass, just come to see us. We're, I yeah, guess where, we're going to be downstairs. Be? So where we can go? We'll be just outside. Yeah. Outside. Yeah. So for those who want to try Glass, I mean, we uh, will be keen to <laughs> yeah. to make you try because to to understand Glass, you need to try it because it's quite quite exactly. impressive. So. And Good. Yeah, and if you know, uh, and if you are a company or you know a company that are interested in uh, developing an app on uh, Google Glass, I'm doing uh, consulting on Google Glass, so come to see me. <laughs> yeah, we we'll just had a second. Come to see us uh, and uh, uh, Niji. I don't know, little yeah. world. So big company. Uh, we are, we have 100 developers in Rennes working on uh, Android, uh, uh, on uh, web, and on. Um, basic applications, but we have we can develop on Glass right now, and as you saw, we did the uh, Lekip application. So, okay, we're outside. See you. Thank you. Thank you.